Thank you, sir, for your insights. Meanwhile, from China's economy to Asia's airline industry, which is battling a number of problems, international passenger traffic and cargo routes are feeling the squeeze, with some companies encountering foreign buyouts and ferocious price wars. The BBC's correspondents in Sydney and Tokyo have more. Well, here in Australia, the airline industry has been undergoing unprecedented changes, led, of course, by the troubled Qantas, which just last week announced that it expected profits to fall by around 90 percent, the biggest single drop in its 91-year history. Now, the company blames things like rising fuel prices, increased competition, and continued turmoil in the European market. It's announced a pretty drastic solution. It's going to split the company in two, setting up a domestic business and an international one. But that might not be the end of its problems, because Etihad, the Middle Eastern airline, has said that it wants to take a stake in Virgin Australia, Virgin being the biggest single competitor to Qantas here in Australia. And if that goes ahead, well, the competition for Qantas will be much more fierce. And if that wasn't enough, there's a new kid on the block in the form of low-cost airline Scoot, a subsidiary of Singapore Airlines. Here in Japan, budget airlines are a relatively new concept. The aviation market here has been among the most regulated in the region. But now they are moving in. AirAsia has a joint venture with ANA. Jetstar is ramping up to begin its operations, joining Peach and other airlines. Well, the change has come as Japan Airlines has abandoned routes and sold off aircraft. It declared bankruptcy two years ago and needed a government bailout to keep flying. JAL is now slowly recovering after cost-cutting and is starting to post better profits. So what can companies and policymakers do to ease this turbulence? Over the next two days, 650 aviation industry leaders will meet in Beijing for the International Air Transport Association's annual meeting. And Martin Craigs is a chief executive of the Pacific Asia Travel Association, or PATA, and joins me now from Beijing. Thank you so much for joining us, Martin. First of all, what is the buzz right now in this IATA conference? And how are the national carriers coping with this turbulence and the competition from the budget carriers? Good morning, Rico, from a blue sky in Beijing. You know, we're an industry of optimists. And uh, despite all that's thrown at us through natural disasters and unreasonable taxation, we still have a lot of people who believe that they are uh, providing a, a vital service for the world economy in difficult times. So the buzz here from last night, I would say, is, uh, is stout and positive. But the reality is the IATA Airlines, 233 of them, are still only projecting, as of March, to make three billion US dollars profit this year out of a six hundred and thirty billion dollar turnover. That's half a percent return. That's so very, very minimal, uh, Martin. Uh, so what kind of policies and uh, moves are they planning to do to improve on these numbers despite the turbulence coming out from Europe and from the US? Uh, to put it fairly bluntly, Rico, we could just do with governments getting out of the way. Instead of taxing and harassing the uh, goose that lays the golden egg for so many other people to make successful and profitable businesses, governments, particularly in Europe, seem to be doing their level best to unreasonably tax and harass this industry. Mm -hmm. Contrary to China, where we're having 70 new airports produced here over the last three to four years, in the UK particularly, we have a government with a rather bizarre mindset that believes to lecture everyone else on free trade, free trade and then impose a detention tax via APD on everyone who visits Britain. Let me tell you one comparative statistic. The UK government will pocket more money, over three billion US dollars this year, than all the IATA airlines will collectively make in profit. Does that sound reasonable to you, or does it even sound logical? Indeed, uh, Martin, these are challenging times for the aviation industry. We would like to thank you for joining us from our studios in Beijing. Martin Craig's Chief Executive of PATA. And now to the glitz and glamour of the silver screen.